everybody, I am back with my next design team project using um, Simple Stories, Simple Vintage Weathered Garden. I love their Simple Vintage lines. Um, I think there's only been one that I didn't just go completely nuts over. They're just, I don't even know what it is because I'm not normally a flower person. I'm definitely a butterfly person, which was why this one just sucked me in. I'm not typically a flower person, but there's just something about the way these they put these collections together that I just love them. So here is my project. So I have made a very large album here. This is 10 and a half by 10 and a half with a two and a half inch spine. Um, we have a nice little acetate window here in the front so that you can see through to one of the gorgeous papers that is on the first page inside. I use the heartfelt uh, large wild rose dye. So this is my December design team package. This is my January. <laughs> so I did two for my January. I've got two of the dyes just, you know, and I need to like kind of walk you through how to use them and like what I did. But so I used that for the flowers and I also ended up using the um, glitter kiss by what is the name of the company? Cosmic Shimmer. So it comes with a little sponge piece in the top here, like this. Mine's sitting in the bathroom drying because you wash it off after you use it. But this glitter stuff, you can use a whole bunch and like really build it up, or you can just use a little bit, which is what I did on my flowers here, just to give them some um, pop. Um, and then for my centers, because the prills for the flowers for um, the heartfelt dyes, which are these little bitty things in the center here, are out of stock right now. And I had just ordered the um, Prima Memory Hardware Pearls. So, which I actually ordered these anticipating using these with uh, the wedding paper from Country Craft Creations. And it actually worked perfectly to use for the centers for my flowers. So I've done something a little bit different here. So what I've done, instead of doing a shake or anything, or a complete acetate front, I've just got kind of a window in here. And, you know, that looks through to the very first page in the album, which does not have any photo mats. It's just one of the sheets of paper from the collection that I absolutely loved. Um, what I did is I fussy cut one of the images from one of the papers that I've added to the spot to a side spine that wraps around here. There's magnets hidden in there in underneath the fussy cutting and then on the edge of this frame here so that this will stay closed. It will stay pulled up so that you see that back there and then actually the whole album will stand up for display as well. So let's get into it. So when we get in here Again, like I said, it was just, whoops, apparently my glue is not totally dry because there were two of my pearls. <laughs> it happens. It's not a big deal. Okay. So in here, I kept this very simple. I've got just a couple of the stickers that I um, put on the olive artisan cardstock, which is what I used for this, um, and then cut around with my scanning cut, which I love that for that. That is like just the best thing ever. Um, some of the cut aparts, I used the layered stickers just to kind of add some things on this page and then right here on the inside. I've also got the, um, what do they call them, chipboard clusters. So I've used those throughout the book as well. And then my butterflies here, yeah, I yeah, definitely didn't put enough glue right there, um, are out of the floral bits, which I intended to use more of these and um, I really didn't because I decided to play with that instead. So um, pages are 10 by 10. So when we go to our back of our first page, we've got a couple of cut aparts that are just matted on um, cardstock. We've got a nice tuck spot here. Again, the stickers from the collection that I have fussy cut around. Same thing there. This is one of the chipboard clusters right here, this big piece. This opens up and we've got a nice big pocket here. So I've got just a photo mat with a cut apart that's loose so you could tuck a photo or something else underneath there. 
And then we've got another little booklet that is five by seven that's got a couple of photo mats on the inside. You can put another photo here. And then it's got one of the cut aparts on the front. And then this is held closed, which really it's heavy enough it will stay down pretty much on its own because of that chipboard piece. On this side, we've got a little pocket with two more of the cut aparts, um, a couple more of the stickers that have been fussy cut around. And we've got a couple of flaps here. We've got another pocket. This is another one of the chipboard pieces, got a little fussy cut sticker. And another really big pocket. And again, I've just got my photo mat with the tuck spot and then another little photo booklet. And as you can see, even with those in there, there's still tons of space in here to add more um, elements and photos and that kind of thing. So this one, again, is held shut with the cut aparts. I was trying to not use as many magnets as I normally would because I'm trying to break my dependency on them, even though I love them. But again, we've got another chipboard piece, another cut apart on a tuck spot, uh, a couple of cut aparts here. We've got two big photo flaps here and then a belly band. And in with the belly band, we've got two photo layouts that have uh, cut aparts on them that of course are left loose so you can get photos underneath them. Um, and those just came out really fun. This paper is just gorgeous. I love it. Okay, so over here we have a split belly band. So I've got just a photo mat here, about five by seven. I've got another one of the cut aparts sitting on top of that there. It is only attached on one side, so you've got your other half of your belly band here. And I've got a couple more of the stickers I fussy cut around, and then a couple of stickers that I did not. Um, and then you've got just lots of spots there for pictures. Which really, I don't know what it was about this paper, but this paper to me seemed very wet, wedding album-y, I guess, if that's a word. <laughs> um, and then there is space in the top of each one of these pages to do an insert if you want to. I don't typically put those in my books just because my books don't get pictures, so I don't always put those in there. But there is definitely enough space to put them in here. So here we've got another one of those big chipboard pieces. Open this up. We've got another fussy cut sticker that is loose to put things under. We've got another photo booklet. This one got some stickers. A couple of them in there didn't. I guess I just, I think I got interrupted. I think I had to go feed people dinner. Um, <laughs> and then another photo mat there. And then this one actually has a flap that folds up and you've got photo spaces there. And this one I did actually use a tiny magnet in there to keep that one down. So here we've got another big pocket, another photo booklet, another photo mat. And then this opens up like this or like this. And I don't think I am stuck and I forgot to mat in here. <laughs> I forgot it opened that way too probably because it got just a little bit stuck there, so I forgot. So this one, we did seam binding. And again, we've got another one of those chipboard pieces and one of the fussy cut stickers, which I posted video of the stickers being cut out um, on my Instagram tonight, so go look for that. So we've got another uh, chipboard piece there. We've got two more of our big photo layouts here. And then we've got another small belly band on top of that that's got a small 4x6 photo book there that slides down in there. And then on the last page, we've got an expanding pocket that has the rest of my cut aparts in there because they're adorable. And then two more of the photo mats. So, and again, there's tons of space in there. And this one does actually have too small of a magnet really for what it ended up being which you know that's my fault so there you go there is the project um i need to fix my flower on this side that i didn't get enough glue on because <laughs> it happens i mean you know and whatnot but the tutorial will be up 
Actually, the tutorial will probably pl will play right after this. I don't think I'm going to separate them into two videos. Um, so as always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and ring the bell if you would like to be notified when I post new projects. And tutorial starts now. Okay, so we're going to start with two pieces of chipboard, 10 and a half by 10 and a half, and two pieces, 10 and a half by two and a half. I'm going to set these aside, and I'm going to set this one aside. So we're going to cut an opening in one of these pieces. So you're going to make a mark three quarters of an inch in from one side, which I'm doing it from the left side, which when you're cutting, it really doesn't matter. When we actually go to put the book together, then it's going to matter. So three and three quarters of an inch in from one side, one inch in from the other side, and then half an inch top and bottom. Okay. So I've got that measured and marked. And all I'm going to do, and I am going to do this with a craft knife as opposed to trying to do it in a trimmer or something, just because I seem to have a little bit better luck doing it this way. I have a new blade in my knife. And what I'm going to do is just hold that and then just get my first little kind of groove, I guess we'll call it. Okay, so I'm not trying to go all the way through on the first pass. All I'm doing is getting that line started. Okay. Because once we get that line started, then we'll be able to cut it just making passes without actually having to try and keep the ruler there and keep the ruler straight as we're going through the chipboard. Now, you could do this in a paper trimmer. I have done it in a paper trimmer many, many times. It does work. I just have, you know, an older blade that I have marked that I know is my blade for um, chipboard. So you'll see because I've been down my line one time, I've created a groove that I can just put the knife in there and drag it through the groove. Just giving it a little bit of pressure so that I'm not having to, you know, really fight with this. But I'm able to cut all the way through. And you'll be able to tell when you get through because it will all of a sudden slide really, really easily, which I did Go ahead. I should have cut that out before I put my um, tape on the back of this, but honestly, I wasn't thinking about it when I cut this last night, so. That's okay. Because I probably can actually just save this piece and use it as another album cover. It will all be cut and ready to go. Whoops. And do kind of take your time so that you don't pop out of your little groove there like I just did. Completely through on three sides. Corners are always a little bit tricky because you don't want to go too far. Really, my problem there is just the backing on my tape. There we go. Okay, so last side. You do want to start with a fresh knife in your, or what? I can't talk. 
fresh blade in your knife because it will make this go easier and faster for sure. Corners. Corners are, like I said, always the part that just doesn't want to quite go through because, of course, you're trying to stop at a specific point. Aha! There we go. All right. So there's our frame. So I'm going to hang on to that because I can use it somewhere else, somewhere on down the line. So. You're going to get your scoreboard, you're going to get your spacers, and we are going to start with a piece of cardstock 11 and a half by 11 and a half. We're going to use our one inch spacers. Okay. I'm going to get the backing off of my tape. This should be 12 by 12, not 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So let me grab another piece of paper. And even then, it's still not going to be quite right because we're only going to have three quarters of an inch on each side. So I told you I was tired the other night when I did this. So I'm going to just lightly score. Three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to use that to line up my chipboard. Yeah, ten and a half. You can't add two inches because that would be twelve and a half. <laughs> oh my gosh. Seriously, it was a long night the other night. Ten and a half, or sorry, three quarters and three quarters. Just so I have a visual as to where I'm lining this up. side for our two, which these are going to be short as well, I think. Did I just put, okay, bear with me one second here, I need to cut some new pieces to wrap my spine, hold on one minute. Okay, so it dawned on me, I have the small spacers. <laughs> So if I take the half inch and the quarter inch, then I've got my three eighths of an inch, or three eighths, three quarters of an inch. So for the spine pieces, you need two pieces, uh, 12 by five and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my backing off of here. And one of these we are going to have to cut down, but rather than try to confuse you with the measurements, we're just going to do it this way and we'll cut it down when we need to. So here's our second one. Okay. Move my little spacers and move this. So on all four pieces, we're going to go just like we always do, and we're going to fold and burnish our cardstock. Oops. 
around the chipboard. And the same for both of these. Before we start actually wrapping, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, I'm going to put my ruler corner to corner, and you don't have to do it this way. You can just take your scissors and cut an X in here, but Seriously. God, our chipboard must have dealt this knife already. That'd be about right, wouldn't it? <laughs> okay. So we're going to do that. And then what we want to do is fold and burnish these up and then we're actually going to cut about come down to an inch on the two these two sides and half inch on the other two sides so that we can fold these up and over but you want to fold them up first just to make sure but really this one we could just do it that way but that doesn't not a big deal. So again, I'm just going to come in with my knife. On the other side. And again, you don't have to do this with the ruler. You can do this with scissors. It's going to be on the inside and eventually get matted over anyway that nobody's going to see if it's not like all pretty and straight. And on this one, I want about half an inch. I'm actually going to go just a hair under half an inch. this side. All right. So I am going to pause it for a second um, because I'm having severe wrist pain today so I am going to have to go around all of these with um, score tape. But what you're going to do on all four pieces is you're going to come in on those lines that we folded and you're going to cut out those corners. Okay. I'm just going to demonstrate it on one and I will do the other three off camera, but it's going to be the same process for each of them. Okay. 
then you're going to fold in and you're just going to miter those corners ever so slightly. that on all four pieces and then all we're going to do is come around and glue these down. So I will be right back. Okay, so what we're going to do is wrap our chipboard. So I'm going to come around and pull the backing off of my score tape. And again, the score tape on this part is optional. Um, I have some nerve issues in my hands and so using the um, <clears throat> tape along with the, ch uh, the glue makes it a little bit easier for me. I literally just unclogged this before I turned the camera back on so that we would not have a problem. But here we are. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to run glue along the edge of my chipboard and then I'm going to get it in my little space in between. Take my bone folder, we're going to push up against the chipboard and then we're going to come over and down using the tape in conjunction with the glue just makes it grab immediately and then I don't have to spend a whole lot of time pushing down on it and burnishing which is what causes my problem. <laughs> so I spent the last week purging in my craft room and at some point during that I was carrying some stuff upstairs that I had to kind of hold weird and that's what re-aggravated all this because it's really been pretty good for the last couple of months but that's okay. So on this one, so I've got my tape on my frame pieces and then I've got it on the two ends here but these two pieces as you can see are going to be just a tiny bit long. Okay. So what I'm going to do, actually I can't do it with that, I'm going to have to just do it with scissors. I am going to take about, well, not quite a quarter of an inch, but not quite an eighth of an inch, somewhere in between off of this on both sides. Okay. I'm actually going to start with those two shorter sides because with those I put the tape on the chipboard directly rather than trying to do it on the cardstock knowing I was going to have to take some of that off. So again, glue along the spine, or sorry, along the edge of the chipboard. Now we're going to push up and then over and down. And when you're doing kind of a bigger album that you maybe don't have the full inch on the sides there, I really do recommend using the combination of the tape and the glue because it's going to ensure that it does stick down where you need it to stick down. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and get our backing up on our other two sides. And then I'm actually going to get it off of our little centerpiece as well. So we can have that one done and ready to go. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. Slide down. Down, and then we'll do the exact same thing on these um, pieces around the frame. 
we're not actually making this one into a shaker. See, I really should have taken a tiny bit more off of this one when I trimmed that one down because it is kind of close to the edge there. In fact, I've got just a hair hanging over on this side, but I can fix that in a little while. And it will be fine. little pieces. And that is wrapped. All right. So on our two spine pieces, you're just doing your glue or your glue and tape on the top and the bottom on the two short pieces, short sides. Hold on to this thing. Um, it can go up and over. And up and over. And we're going to do that on both pieces, both spine pieces. All right, so put that aside for right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn both of these over. I'm going to have to do this left-handed, so it's going to be clunky. I'm sorry. <laughs> what you're going to do is you're going to take your bone folder and you are going to burnish right up along that chipboard, so that you're working the cardstock over the edge of that chipboard, and you'll see. You can see where there's now a line. You can see where the chipboard is, where on this side you can't. You want to do that on both of your spine pieces. I may be finding out if I can score my paper left handed too. This ought to be really fun today. <laughs> okay, so. <clears throat> To assemble this, we're going to do our main pieces first. So what I'm going to do is I am still going to take a piece of score tape and I'm going to put it on this edge down here. The reason for this is when I attach my covers, this is going to grab it immediately. So as I'm burnishing, the glue isn't going to make this slip or slide down or whatever. I've, you know, I was doing it without the tape for quite a while. And the more I thought about it, I had a couple of covers that, you know, it had shifted just a little bit and I didn't realize it. And I went, this is really, this is dumb. Why am I not continuing to use both even when doing this step? Um, you know, and part of that is I tend to get in a hurry, so I maybe don't let this sit and dry as long as I should. Um, and that's entirely on me because I do get in a hurry. Okay, so I'm going to use, I'm going to show you the other way that I've seen like Bonnie and a couple other people do. So I'm going to put this in my scoreboard. And I am going to use the scoreboard as I line this up and push it down so that it's going to be on here perfectly. Okay, we're going to turn it around. We're going to do the same thing on the other side, which the scoreboard trick is a little bit easier when it's an album not quite this big, but it does still work. Okay. So, easy peasy. Put that glue on my scoreboard. That's it. All 
All right, so we are going to reinforce this center section right here with a piece of cardstock that is 10 and 3 eighths by five and a half. Actually, is it five and a half? It was. I think I meant to actually go six, but that's okay. And you do want to do this entire backing on this with score tape. Yes, you could glue it. However, when you glue it on this step, it does tend to bubble a little bit and pop up a little bit, which you don't want. So there's that. I'm going to just burnish this down. And then we're going to fold. And I'm going to work that crease as I fold. Here. Okay. So if you don't want to do the closure like I've done, which of course you've seen the walkthrough so you know what the closure is going to look like, you could stop at this point and leave your album like this. However, I am going to do my little fussy cut closure that's going to sit across this bottom corner. So I'm going to go ahead and use my other spine piece. So I'm going to grab my scoreboard again. I am going to put my quarter inch score tape on one side only because we're going to have to trim the other side just a touch. Actually, no, we actually need to fold the other side over. Totally forgot. Let's back up a step. Sorry, I have my moments some days where things just don't seem to connect in my brain. Okay, so on one of these, that's what it was. We weren't trimming it. We were actually wrapping three sides, not just the tops and bottom. Okay, so down and then we can attach it to the other side. So again, I'm just going to use my chipboard, I'm sorry, my scoreboard to get that lined up. Okay, so this piece to reinforce is going to be four inches by ten and three eighths. And again, you want the um, Score tape completely covering the back of this. And we're going to go just almost, almost to this edge, but not quite all the way. So again, are going to fold up and work that crease. So then we have our little fancy closure. This is going to sit like so. We are going to do a couple of magnets on here to hold that closure, but we're not to that point. So for now, you can set this whole piece aside. 
All right, so let's do our hinge and our page bases. One second, let me find my rest of my pieces. Okay, so for our spine, you need a piece that is 10, that is not 10 and a half. That is nine and seven eighths. I don't know why that says 10 and a half. Nine and seven eighths by five and a half. Erase all of that off of there. We are going to score this every half inch. Okay, so with the five and a half at the top of your scoreboard, we're going to score half an inch, one inch, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, and five. So, a couple ways you can do this. You can do fold and burnish and glue one tap of your hinge at a time and then fold, you know, for the next one and the next one. Or we can fold the whole thing right now. I tend to do it one at a time in an effort to keep my hinge more straight. Okay? So, I've got my one piece ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and get glue in here. And I'm going to fold over and burnish this down. Okay, so there's our first hinge. You're going to skip your next spot and you're going to go and fold the next two together. Okay, so hinge, skip this section, fold the next two together, okay? So I'm going to fold these up. And I'm going to burnish them back and forth. Okay, so you'll see we've got our gusset, we've got our two hinges. Okay, so we're going to glue the next hinge. Okay, fold and burnish that down. Now we've got our first two hinges. You're going to skip the next one and fold the next two together. And again, I'm going to burnish that one down. I'm going to set this back flat. And then I'm going to fold over and burnish both directions that it needs to move. Okay. And then we'll turn it over and we'll glue. Burnish that down. Sorry guys, I have to put the put those on for one second. Which makes it harder on me to do this, but at least then it doesn't hurt quite as badly. <laughs> Okay, so you're going to skip and you're going to fold these last two together. Okay. And then you're going to fold it back. And then we're going to come in and glue. It looks like it didn't really quite glue down there. Burnish. Fold it back this way and burnish again. OK. 
Okay, and so we've got our hinges. I do need to fix the end of both of those. Didn't quite catch, and I'm sure it's because I'm not able to burnish that as hard as I normally would right now. Okay, so there's our hinge for our four pages. You can go ahead at this point if you would like and put it down in here if you would like to mat underneath it, which is what I'm most likely going to do. Um, you can go ahead and just set it aside for right now, okay? So, page bases. You are going to have four pieces that are, oops, can't grab everything there, 10 by 10. Actually, did it right the other day. The 10 by 10 pieces, you can just set aside. We're not going to score those. You then need four pieces that are 10 and a half by 10 and a half. And these, we are going to score at half an inch on two sides. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and score all four of these. So what we're going to do on all four of these pieces where your score line intersects down here at the bottom, you're going to cut straight across. Okay. On your other two corners where you have your score line, you're just going to miter. those mitered, what we're going to do is fold our score lines and burnish. So, these are going to go together like so. So, you're going to have an open end that is where the hinge is going to slide in. Okay? You have a couple of options here. You can attach them just at the bottom for right now, and then when you go to actually put it on the hinge, then you would glue this side, and then of course, glue your other side to the hinge. I am going to go ahead and glue them entirely right now because then I can make sure that my top piece is not too big. 
the other thing that we can do, and this actually makes them a lot straighter and a lot easier, we can wrap that to the outside, but we need to take all of these 10 by 10 pieces and we need to take just a tiny, tiny bit off of all of them. Okay? I mean, we're talking just, you know, teensy, teensy bit off of all of them. Okay? Because what you can do then is you lay this in here, you line up this upper corner, and then all you have to do is glue those two sides down. And then your page, or page bleh, if I can talk, is going to be perfectly square. Okay? So that's how I am going to do these. I'm just like giving you both options. I've done it both ways. And honestly, I go back and forth. But today, I really don't feel like spending a lot of time fighting with this, essentially. So I'm going to do it this way. So I'm going to fold over and burnish. The other thing doing it this way that it will do is if you wanted to do inserts for the pages themselves, this will give you a little bit more space on the inside to do that so that those inserts, when you do them, aren't as tight. just like so. So now we've got the page because when you mat on this side of course you're going to cover all that up so you're not going to see that. This is going to slide right onto our hinge and it just goes together a little bit easier. So let me go ahead and trim these just a little tiny bit. Ready to go. All right, move that out of the way. I have another one of my page faces. I'm gonna line it up in that corner, and then I am gonna glue this down. All right. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do the other two off camera and then I will be back. Okay, so I matted my inside here. Let's look at our closure. And again, this is optional. If you're not going to do the closure like I'm doing it, you're going to leave this um, piece right here off. 
but what I've done is I have fussy cut the flowers that I'm going to use and they came off of this sheet right here which is called Memories Made. So what I'm doing, <clears throat> just kind of setting this on here and kind of getting an idea of where it's going to sit once it's matted. And that actually is not going to work really bad sitting right now. So let me move that. So that's not going to sit where I wanted it to sit. So instead, we're just going to use the two big sets on here. Put down really quickly. Just make sure they're going to sit where I want them to sit. Okay. So, those are about right. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull those two pieces off and set those back over to the side here. What I'm going to do is glue this piece down, and this piece is about six inches wide. I'm going to get it over here on this far edge so that I've got a big strip on this side because what we're going to do is glue this down. We're going to fussy cut around on this side. We're going to leave a tab on this side to attach. Okay? So, what I'm going to do. This is going to have to sit and dry for just a minute, so I'm probably going to fussy cut around the actual flowers and whatnot on this off camera because it will have to sit and dry for a few minutes before I start trying to cut so that I don't screw it up. Okay, so I'm going to line this up. I'm going to go about an eighth of an inch up from the bottom and then an eighth of an inch from whatever piece sticks out the furthest on this side, just depending on if you use the same image, how you decide to cut around it, <clears throat> that kind of thing. But what we're going to do while that part is drying, I'm going to turn this, put this in here, and Line this up so that, and if you've got the Fiskars trimmer with the wire, that would actually be easier, but I want to line this up so that I'm cutting nice and straight from approximately where my fussy cutting is going to start on this top piece. Okay, the bottom piece we can just freehand because it is there at the bottom close to where we would be um, cutting this off anyway. So I'm going to give this a minute to dry, then I'm going to fussy cut around here. What we're going to do right here, though, and we'll probably go ahead and do this, even without it being completely dry, is I'm going to put this in my scoreboard, and then I am going to go about an eighth of an inch over and score. So this tab is what's going to attach on the book. And what I'm going to do is take from that 
place where I've scored it. I am going to mark it. Okay. So once this is cut out, we will fold this over. And we'll attach that on here. We'll put our magnets back on here and get those put down where they need to go. But then this is going to flip over the front of this and attach down like this with the magnets to hold our book closed. Okay, so I am going to set that aside for just a minute. Move that so that it won't cut my arm. <laughs> and I'm going to grab my hinge. So <clears throat> I'm going to glue this down. That. This is why I literally like don't use the fine tip half the time because I feel like all I do is fight. But it's just so nice. Okay. Alright, so I am just going to center this up, top to bottom, right to left. You should have almost half an inch on the right and left sides and about a quarter of an inch top and bottom. Okay, so that is down. Now we can go ahead and I'll leave this up to you if you want to put your pages on now and then add your flaps or if you want to do your flaps and things and then put them on. Um, I think I'm actually going to do my flaps and things and then put the pages on once they're built. Um, really, you could do it either way, but I am going to turn these so that my edges where I folded those over um, are going to be facing to the back. So all you're going to do is line these up on here, give it about a sixteenth of an inch from where the hinge moves, and then you're just going to glue those on there. Okay, so let me fussy cut this out so we can get this on. I'll be right back. Okay, so I ended up adding a second layer of artisan on the back of this. So what I would suggest is you fussy cut your image, put it on the artisan, fussy cut it again, and then do this section. Um, and I would do the magnets, which, I mean, they're, they're fine where they are. But I would fussy cut this, mat it, fussy cut again, then do the magnets, and then do that second piece that you leave the flap on. I think that's going to hold, it's going to be a little bit um, sturdier doing it that way. So, all right, so this is going to go on here like this. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get the backing off of my magnet. So I can get those placed and then we will glue our flap. So, just lining this up so that it's at the bottom and that it's wrapped around the edge of that side of our cover. And then I'm just going to push those down. And that's going to hold that in place while we get our <clears throat> glue on the back of this tab so we can get it placed exactly where we want it to where it's going to hold everything shut Oops. and um, close perfectly. So line this up. Where I want the cover to line up. And then I'm just closing that down. And then burnishing. So you'll see because of the cover, that's going to sit out just a touch 
from where we scored it so it will fold over. So what's going to happen is that's going to come all the way up and that's going to close perfectly. Okay, so um, acetate. You can do this a couple of ways. You can do acetate on the front and the back of this window. You can do it just on the back of the window. Um, it's entirely up to you which way you want to do it because we're not, this isn't going to be a shaker or anything, so it's not like we don't need space in between here. However, if you wanted to put something in between, you absolutely could. Um, <clears throat> just make sure it's something fairly flat, um, you know, sequins maybe or something. I'm not going to put anything in the middle there, and I'm actually going to put my acetate when I get to that point on the back side of this. Okay, so for now, I'm going to set this aside. And we're going to start working on our page elements. And I will apologize in advance for the noise coming out of the room. In fact, let me get up and close my door really quick. Okay, so the front of page one actually isn't going to have any elements because I am going to cut this particular sheet to fit here. However, I am going to double mat it with one of the solids. I'm not sure which one yet. So I've just got this set aside and then I've got, you know, my solids I can pick from. So we're going to go on the back side of page one for our elements here. And what we have, let me find my notes. Give me one second. Sorry. All right. All right, so we have a pocket. We are going to score. So our pocket is 11 by five and a half. We're gonna score this at half an inch on three sides, two short sides, one long side. Okay. We have a flap that is going to be 10 by 6.5 with the 6.5 at the top of your scoreboard. We're going to score at half an inch. We then are going to have a longer tuck spot that's going to sit at the bottom here because what we'll do is use one of the cut aparts as an ele element to. Um, basically hold this closed. So I'm going to grab my scissors. We are going to miter our top corners on our pocket. And then we are going to miter through the score lines on the bottom corners. Okay. With our flap, we're going to miter the top corners. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and take my pocket. Fold and burnish all of my score lines. And this it's going to go at the bottom of this page. I'm just going to dry fit it to make sure it's not too wide. Okay, the door's shut. I can still hear them. I'm trying to make sure you guys can probably hear them, so I apologize. But they're playing video games and yelling, but at least they're not fighting, which is what usually happens, so it's okay. I'm not going to complain at this point. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put glue on my bottom tab first. Okay. 
the way to the bottom of the page. Open my sides. Make sure everything is glued down. There is oops, an insert that is going to go in this pocket. The base for the insert is going to be 7 by 10. You're going to score it at 5 inches on the 10 inch side. So you have a 5 by 7 insert that's going to go in here. But we will come back and do our inserts later. There's, I think, I think I did three of them total, but I'm not positive. So we will come back and do those later on. So let's go ahead. Our top flap glued on here. And again, we're going to go all the way to the top. If you wanted to put magnets in here to close this, you absolutely could. And then we are going to do a little tuck spot down here at the bottom where we can mat one of the cut aparts that's going to tuck in here and hold this closed. However, I do want to mat this first. So I'm not actually going to glue it down just yet because I probably will bring it up about a quarter of an inch from the bottom when I glue it on here. So I'm not going to do it just yet. I'm going to just clip this all back on here. And that is page one. Okay, page two, let's find all our front pieces, here for the next one, all right, all right, so we've got another pocket, this one is going to be 11 by six and a half. So we are going to score half an inch on three sides, two short sides, one long side. Okay. We have a flap that is 7 by 10. We're going to score that at half an inch with the 7 inch side at the top. We have another flap that is 5 and a half by 7. This one with the five and a half inch side at the top, we are going to score a half an inch. Then we've got a tiny pocket, and this is going to be four and a half by two and a half. So again, we're going to score half an inch on three sides, two short sides, one long side. So basically, you're going to score, start on the short with the long side across the top of the scoreboard, so you're scoring down the short side. So we just keep shifting on here. Um, so you'll score half an inch, turn, half an inch, turn it, and then half an inch again. Okay, let's go ahead and miter our pockets. So we're going to go across to the bottom of the score line. We're going to do our little top pieces here. We're going to do the same thing on our big pocket. And then on both of our flaps, we're going to miter as well. Okay. <clears throat> so, first thing we're going to put down on this is going to be our pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish. Okay. This is going to be a side loading pocket. So since this is going to be the front of our second page, which obviously you can move these elements to any page you want to. This is just the order I'm doing it in. 
since this is what's going to go on my hinge, I'm going to make sure that my opening is on my left. Oops. And again, we're going to start with the bottom of our pocket. So, I guess it's not technically the bottom, I guess it's the side of our pocket because it's a side loading pocket, but you get the basic idea. <laughs> okay. Put that down. We're going to do our sides here. Now, let's get our big flap. It's going to go on this opposite side. Our five by seven flap, five and a half by seven. It will be five by seven once we fold our tab over. It's going to come in from this side, and then our little tiny pocket is going to sit down here. And again, we'll have another tag or something that we're going to tuck in there that's going to hold all of this closed. sit on here like this and then our tiny pocket I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish and it's going to sit right down here so assuming that we've measured correctly and this is actually coming in just a tiny bit further than I thought so I'm actually going to trim just a tiny bit off the end of that because you don't want it interfering with our little pocket here that's going to hold everything closed. Okay. So, grab my trimmer really quickly. I am going to trim just a tiny, tiny bit off of this, like maybe a sixteenth of an inch. I don't think I need to go any more than that. Okay. And then that sits there just perfectly. So there's that. Okay, let's go to the back side. So this side, we are going to have a tuck spot. My tuck spot is one and a quarter by two and three quarters. So I'm just going to set that to the side. We have a belly band that is three by 11. So with the 11 inch at the top of the scoreboard, I'm going to score it half an inch, turn it all the way around, half an inch again. We have another insert that, like I said, we'll come back and do our inserts. This one is, again, 10 by 7. You would score this at 5 inches. And then we've got two flaps that are 5 and a half by 7 and 5 eighths. So with the 7 and 5 eighths at the top of this, I'm sorry, are they 5 and a half? Oh, they are. Okay. Um, 7 and 5 eighths at the top of the scoreboard. You're going to score this at half an inch on both of these. Okay. And we are going to miter on all of our flaps.
and then on our belly band. Our top spot there. All right, so then we're going to fold and burnish on our belly band. Going to bring this in and we are going to center that right here on our page. Centered. Okay. Our tuck spot is going to go right here, centered at the bottom of the belly band. But again, I want to map this before I put this down. Okay. Our two flaps are going to overlap. On the center of the belly band. And again, our tuck spot, we're going to do a cut apart, and that's going to be what's going to hold these flaps closed. Okay? So, I am going to eyeball this and get this centered as best I can. You, of course, could measure if you want to. I'm not that concerned with it. line up the other one on top and again you can go to your outside edge and glue that flap down okay so for now I am going to paper clip all of this back together and then page two is done Page three, front. We have two flaps that are five and a half by ten. <clears throat> With the five and a half at the top of the scoreboard, we are going to score this at half an inch on both. Okay, and we're going to miter both of these. And then we are going to do a split belly band for the closure on this. So before we do that, let's get our page three in here. And you can decide if you want your flaps opening this way or if you want them opening top to bottom. I am going to go to the side. First one on. Okay. So again, you're going to go to your outside edge, burnish that down. And I'm going to fold. And burnish and before we glue this we are going to just make sure that these meet in the middle but don't overlap and amazingly I got that one perfect without having to trim anything it's a miracle <laughs> that never happens So again, we're going to go to the outside edge, 
sure it's straight. And there we go. So for the split belly band, you have two pieces that are two by six. Both of these, you're gonna score them at half an inch on each end. Okay. And again, we are gonna miter them. Do these together, miter them one at a time. <laughs> sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Now most of the time it does work. Okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these. We are gonna center it on the inside edge. Okay, so there's our flap open. It's going to get centered towards the middle. Okay, so these will be, which really we don't even have to do them right next to each other. We could spread them out, but I do want them next to each other because what we'll most likely end up doing is taking a cut apart, matting it, it will sit on top of one side, um, and then it will end up looking like it's one piece, but then it will open. So. Turn this to the side so I can kind of get an idea of where I want this, which I can't put this down yet. I need to mat that first again. So we're going to clip these all back on here and we'll do that in a little bit after I get some matting down on this page. So I apologize. At least I caught it before I got us completely screwed up, so that's okay. And since I've got glue on this, I'm going to wipe off some of it, and I'm actually just going to set that to the side there, and we'll come back to it. Okay, back side of page three. We are doing... I'm not sure what we're doing. <laughs> I think these are coming on the inside. Okay. All right. So, okay. So, we're going to do a pocket. Pocket is 11 by 5 and a half. two flaps. One is five and a half by ten. That we are going to score at half an inch with the five and a half at the top. The other is six and a half by ten. And again, we're going to score it with the six and a half at the top. And we're going to miter. Remember how I like doing this. Page. <laughs> that is the question. I think my flaps are coming in like so. I think so. And then the pocket's going to be underneath. So we're going to put these down on our outside edges first. And then we will put the pocket down second. Because my pocket's probably... Was I doing it like this? No, I know what I was doing. Okay. Pocket first. I apologize. Get myself confused here. I promise I know what I'm doing most days. Today is not one of those days. 
All right, so we are doing our pocket first. So this is going at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Wants to lay down for me. Probably want to take another break here in a minute and ice my wrist. But we'll go as long as we can until I have to take a break. All right. Okay. The shorter of the two flaps actually goes on top of the pocket. That's what we were doing. One goes there. The longer of the pop flaps, I can't figure out which way I'm folding this, is going to go up here. that one. We're getting there, I promise. Okay. Turn to page four. I have done this on an album, oh, I don't know, a couple years ago, and was like flipping through an older one and, and found this. was like, oh, that was cute. I should do that again. All right, so what we have first are two flaps, six and a half by four and five eighths. Okay. With the four and five eighths side at the top of the scoreboard, we're going to score it half an inch on both of these. Okay. Then we have a piece that is 12 by four and one eighth. We are going to score this at six inches. That one we are just going to fold and burnish. This one we are going to miter. I feel like I'm missing something on this page. I think I am. I just can't think what it is. So we'll work on this element since this is one that doesn't get glued down until after you mat. And then I will figure out what I'm missing because I'm not missing anything. I don't know. Why is this longer? These are supposed to be six, not six and a half. I apologize. So these are supposed to be six, not six and a half. I wonder what I was doing this the other night. I was looking at it going, something's not right. That would be what it was. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm going to redo my mitering here. Okay. So, this is going to go on top of this little flap. Like so. Okay. The other one 
is going to go on the opposite side. Okay. So what you're going to have is this will open this way, open this way, and it will open this way when it's glued in. Okay. Maybe that's what that piece was that I wasn't sure. Bear with me for one second here. Oh, I, I cut it up. <laughs> All right. So this is supposed to be sitting on a pocket. So we need a piece that is seven by eleven. And I should have had another small piece of this. I don't know what happened to it. Could I figure that one out one minute too? So this we are going to score, so this is 7 by 11, actually no, not 11, it's going to be 7 by 10, I'm going to try and do that, I promise, so I'm going to take another inch off of that one. So this we need to score it half an inch on three sides. And then that's what it was. Okay, so this, because it's going to be smaller than the page, will go on after we mat that page. This is going to sit on top of this, okay? So no, that is two six and a half. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so six and a half by 10, you're going to score it on three sides. This is going to sit on top of this to one side here. And it will open this way, it will open this way, and then it will open this way, okay? But we can't do anything with this until we map this and this. So I'm going to clip this all back together. And add it to my pile. Now we are on the back of page three. I'm sorry, page four. All right, so this is going to be oh, stacked belly bands. So we have um, two inserts. Again, one 10 by 7, which will score at 5 inches, which we will do those together, like I said in a minute. The second insert is going to be 6 by 8, which you're going to score at 4 inches. However, the belly bands, first one is going to be 5 by 11. We're going to score half an inch on each end of the 11 inch side at the top of the scoreboard. And then our smaller one is going to be 6 by 4. With the 6 inch at the top, we're going to score at half an inch on each end. And then we are going to miter. being very dramatic. It's still better than the Nerf book that was going on earlier this morning, so that's okay. So we're mitering these. The small one is going to go on top of the larger one. Turn this direction so we can go ahead glue this one on and then we can put the whole thing in the book or the on the page. Okay. Let me 
and sew this up as best we can. I'm just kind of using my board here to figure out where it needs to really sit. Okay, there's my back side, so your opening is going to be on your right this time. Plus, of course, you're putting this on the other side of the page, which is fine as well. It's up to you. Okay. And then this one, I just folded those the wrong direction. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, let's not put the belly band, the small one, on the inside of the belly band because that makes no sense. Okay, so again, we're going to just center this one up. This one up. goes there. All right, so let's do our element for our back inside cover. For this one, we're going to do an expanding pocket with a flap. We can put the pocket down. We cannot put, actually, no, we need to map the whole thing. Anyway, we'll get this prepped. So it's been one of those days. So this is 10 by six and a half. You're going to score half an inch one inch, one and a half inches, turn it, we're going to go half an inch, one inch, one and a half inches, turn it again, half an inch, one inch, one and a half inches. So this is going to be an expanding pocket. So what we're going to do is you're going to cut along your score lines and cut out the corner in the bottom, okay? You're going to miter just a little bit across all three score lines on the top. Okay, I'm going to fold this in, and I'm going to miter just a tiny bit on this bottom. And then same thing on the other side, just a tiny bit. Fold that to the other one, and then again, just a tiny bit going the other direction as well. So this one we can set aside for now because we can't do that until we get it matted. The flap that's going to hold this closed is seven by five and a half. Make sure I did that right. I did. Okay, so with the five and a half at the top, you're going to score this at half an inch and then at three quarters of an inch. Okay, we're going to miter just from the half inch score line. Okay, so we're going to set those aside, and I'm going to get some matting together, and I believe I'm actually going to mat these, I can't decide, do I want to mat these before I put them in the book? I think I do. I don't normally do it that way, but... I think that's going to be a little bit easier in this case. So I am going to mat what I can mat, and I will come back and show you any elements that needed to be attached after matting. And then we will put the pages in the book, and then we will talk about our acetate and our inserts. Okay, so for your window, you need a piece of acetate six and a half by ten and three eighths. And what I've done is I've taken the piece that I'm going to mat on the inside and I laid it underneath and then I traced where the opening was and then I used my Fiskars trimmer because it's got the, um, the little guide wire in there 
and just did cut one eighth to the out one eighth of an inch to the outside of the square that I drew. So I'm going to actually attach my acetate to the matting and then put the whole thing down in the book. simply because that will make this piece a little more stable, I guess, is the word I'm looking for, before I actually have to put it down in the book so I'm not having to um, fight with it. It's going to stay a little more flat when I go to glue it down. So that would be glue. On this side, a little bit from around over here. I'm actually going to run just a tiny bit across the top and bottom. All right, so there is our inside cover matted. So on the outside, I'm going to get some rubbing alcohol and get a whole bit of glue off there. On the outside, I'm going to cut the matting for this, which I should have traced that before I did that, but that's okay. I have my piece I cut out of that one I can use to trace for the front matting. Um, what I'm going to do is we don't have to put another piece of acetate in here, but you can if you want to. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so which I'm going to or not, I can't decide. It really is okay the way it is, but I could put another piece in there if I wanted to. Actually, I think I'm going to leave it. You could add a second piece, but that's how you're going to get that in there. And I will be right back. Okay, pocket on the back inside cover. You're going to fold the sides in a Z fold. Okay? I'm sorry, not a Z fold, an accordion fold. The bottom one, you're actually going to cut off. been a while since I've done one of these and I totally wasn't even thinking about it when I did this the other night. So the bottom you're just going to have a half inch flap. Okay. The sides you're going to have your accordions. Okay. So what we're going to do, so I've got my matting cut for the back inside. Okay. I've got my pocket. My pocket is going to go down in the corner like so. Okay. And then your closure that has the quarter inch gusset is going to sit up above. Okay, so I just kind of eyeballed about where I want that to sit, and then I took my pencil and I just made a little mark on each side. Okay, I have not glued this in yet, so what I'm going to do is Take my pencil, and I'm going down about three inches. Three inches. And we're going to stay about. Nah, not quite a quarter of an inch out of that side of the um, 
matting for the back. So this is seven inches, okay? So I need to make sure it's in about, well, I guess I'm about a quarter of an inch in, which is about where I want it. So I'm gonna go from seven inches, oops, that's right. Okay, but I am going to take my knife, let's get this here too, and I'm going to go along that line, and I'm going to cut. Okay. Then I'm going to go down about not even a sixteenth of an inch along that same line and I'm going to cut again. And what we're doing is we're making a slit in our background matting that we can put the um, whatchamacallit, the flat for our pocket in. So I'm just going to erase, which I think I got the entire line, but so you can see now I've got a slit. So what's going to happen is I'm going to glue this down, and I'm actually going to glue just the top half of it for now, okay? Because this is going to slide in here. so that when you open it, you're not seeing that tab, okay? So, when I put my glue on here, I want to, of course, get around the top. And along the top edge of my slit, and that's where I'm going to glue first. Okay. So I'm getting this lined up about where it's going to end up going. And we're just going to glue down that top edge. So now I'm going to get glue on my tab for my flap. And I haven't folded the second score line on this yet, and that is on purpose. So. We're going to work that down in there and push it down. Okay, now we can fold our gusset that's in that little pocket or that flap. Okay, now I can come back, I can lift this up, and I can get my glue everywhere else that I need to get my glue. That way I don't accidentally glue my slit closed. Okay, then I'm going to come in here with this, I'm push those sides in, I'm going to close that, I'm going to bring it down until it's about a quarter of an inch up from the bottom, and I'm going to glue that bottom tab down first. Okay, you want to pinch your sides in so that as you line this up, You're lining this up so that it lines up exactly underneath your flap. Okay, fold that back down and now you can get your sides. Okay, pull that up out of the way up, make sure my gussets on my expanding pocket are folded down, and burnish that down, and there you go. So you can do whatever kind of closure you want to do on this. I'm probably going to end up doing a magnet just because 
small one I pulled out to use up front and ended up not using. So, all right, so there's that. Got my front matted. There you go. I've got the front of page one matted. I don't have the rest of it yet, but what's going to happen is this is going to sit in here. Set it so it's up high enough. This is going to sit in here, so you're going to see that gorgeous heart floral through the front of your book. That was kind of the whole point. So I did, when I matted this, I did use the piece I'd cut out from the back page, or the back side matting. Um, I did use that to kind of trace where this needed to happen, and then I did fussy cut around just the tip of that wing and then this little butterfly up here um, with just a craft knife um, to get them cut out so that it was still there. Just because I liked how that looked where you've got these flowers and then you've got this one coming up on the side. So um, what I will end up doing, which I need to clean my acetate off with some rubbing alcohol first, what I will end up doing is some of these little thinner parts, I will most likely take um, just a teensy, teensy bit of glossy accents and tack those down just so that they're not going to which really, they're, they're kind of okay. Maybe I don't need to do that. Maybe they'll be okay. But, um, yep, so there's the front of your book. So let me get moving on the rest of the inside pieces, and I'll be right back. All right, so here is the back side of page one. I do have this matted. I'll end up putting just photo mats on the inside of that. And we need to put our tuck spot on. So I've already matted it. And all we're going to do is just run a line of glue along the very bottom of it, center it up, and we bring it up about an, mm, about an eighth of an inch or so from the bottom. And there is your tuck spot. So there is your first page. So when you go to put the pages in the book, what you're going to do and I lost my bone paper here somewhere. There it is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of come in here with my bone folder and kind of push these hinges over. Okay. So here's my opening. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue on this side. Okay. I'm going to slide this from the bottom up, and then I'm going to lay it down and wiggle it back out until there's about an eighth of an inch between the edge of the page here and the edge of the hinge. Okay? I'm going to get glue just on the one side for now. We can come back and do the other side in a second. I'm going to hold this open. And come from the bottom. Slide this on. And lay it over. And I'm going to wiggle it up and out just enough so that the page itself is not sitting all the way down on the hinge. Okay, we're going to burnish that down and I can flip it back this way and because I'm using my fine tip I can come in here and get glue on the rest of my hinge and then press that down. And there is your first page. You will, when you put the rest of the pages in here, you're going to do those the exact same way. Okay. And with that in there, you can see how pretty that's going to be once this is completed. Okay, so the back, tuck spot on the back of page two is one and a quarter by two and three quarters. So I do have that matted, and we're just going to do the same thing again. 
we're going to put it up about an eighth of an inch from the bottom and put that down and then we can take one of our cut aparts, whichever one we decide to go with, and then that will help hold that one closed. Okay, haven't done the other side of this yet other than I did my cut apart over here because this is of course the one we've got the side loading pocket. And we've got the two flaps and then this tucks in there to hold that one. So that's the front of page two. That's the back of page two. Um, I'm going to get the split belly band next. Be right back. Okay, so for the split belly band, I've got this matted. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my ruler on this because I do want this centered. So, I'm going to go ahead and get through on my tabs. And I am going to bring them in about an eighth of an inch from the middle. And glue that down. Then I'm going to turn. I do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm actually going to layer this here just to kind of help with placement. Okay, so those are down. So what will happen is I've got this mat that is five by seven, and I think I need to cut it down just a hair because these are five. And it does not want to slide. Looks like it's actually dry. I don't know. Nope, we're gonna have to take a little bit off that. So. My mat was five by seven. I'm going to take it down to four and seven eighths. In fact, I really could do a four by six in here and that would work just fine as well. But what's going to happen is this is going to slide all the way through like so, and that keeps our page closed. So there is that one. The next one, and this is the front of page three, the back of page three is fine. We're going to do the front of page four. So this is the one with our um, little pullout that sits on the pocket in the center of the page. So let me get this one set up. I'll be right back. Okay, so this is matted. We're going to go ahead and Fold and burnish all three sides on our pocket. Okay, and we are going to center this up. about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. Okay, we do our sides. Okay, so this, because it doesn't, it's the same size as our pocket, you kind of have a choice. You can put it in the middle, you can put it to one side. I think I'm actually gonna put it in the middle, but I need to grab some seam binding to go around it. So let's look and see. That'll work just beautifully. So I'm gonna turn this over. And I'm going to grab some score tape. And I'm going to put this 
short score tape in the middle ish. You can hear him just fine. All right. There's some kind of eyeball where we're trimming that off. Make sure I've got it oriented right so it's opening up. And then you could mat the entire thing underneath there, or you can mat side to side, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some glue on the back here. And center this on my pocket. Okay. And I will tie this to close it up. And there we go. So there's that one. And then there's the back side of page four. So I'm going to finish matting my pages. I will go ahead and put them in just like I showed you with page one. And then we will talk about inserts next. Okay, so inserts. I kind of ended up changing my plan on these. I was going to um, do some pages inside of these, but I've changed my mind. I don't know that we really need to do those. So. All you're going to do, you've got three of them that are 10 by 7. You're going to score those at 5 inches so that they fold in half. And then you've got one that's 6 by 8, and you're going to score that one at 4 inches. Um, so I've got pretty much everything in here. I've got a little bit of matting to do still. Um, but... So... One of these is going here, and really you can make these bigger too for that matter. I probably should have made them bigger. Um, but I was, I don't know, I may still do that because I'm going to end up liking that. It's way too small. Okay, we're going to go back to plan B on that. So um, at this point, like I said, most of it's matted. It just needs decorated. I've got a little bit more matting to do, and some of like the inside stuff needs matted still. But other than that, it's pretty much ready to go. Okay, so inserts. Um, I know I had a completely different plan originally, but I cannot for the life of me remember what it was because <laughs> that's just how this goes sometimes. So what I ended up doing. So I've got four inserts that are five by seven booklets. And what I did is I just matted them on the inside with um, the natural linen artisan and then with leftovers from the collection and some of the cut aparts. So I've got four of those. Okay. And those are just going to go in the various pockets and things. I've got one that's a four by six booklet, same thing. And then I've got six um, five by seven just flat photo mat inserts that I've got like a tuck spot on the front. And then I did four eight by eight that have a photo mat using the, um, uh, the matching solids. And then I just added pieced it to around for the matting and then added cut aparts on all of those. And those actually turned out really cute, I think. So, that's what you've got going as far as inserts. So eight by eight for those, um, just five by seven, just matted photo mats there. One four by six, so this would have been four by, I'm sorry, eight by six, scored at four inches. And then the five by seven that were uh, 10 by seven, scored at five inches. So those are just gonna go various places. Extras. 
some other little pieces I need to put in here um, that'll just go in some of the pockets and things. So, um, like so. So you've got a lot, lot, lot of space in here for your various um, <clears throat> pictures and things. Um, you could do little journal inserts, which maybe that's what I was initially going to do. And then I couldn't decide on a size that was going to make me happy. I think that's actually probably what it was. Um, so the 8x8 eight eight inserts, I've got those going in um, underneath the belly band here. And then I've got two of my cut-aparts there that hold that down. This is, of course, just there's a layout inside there. We've got another pocket here that we're going to stick a couple of these in. And then this is the one that it opens up there. And another pocket here that we're going to stick a couple of these in. And then this is where our little 4x6 booklet sits under the small belly band. And then we've got the two big inserts that sit under the big one. Um, I've got the rest of my cut aparts here that are going to go down in this one. I don't know if those will fit. Oh, they will. Perfect. So I'm going to put all of those in here. And then I just need to finish up the um, decorating and we'll be all done. That's what we've got going right now. So I am going to finish up the decorating. I've got um, stickers I haven't done anything with yet. And I've also got the, um, I've got the floral bits, which is probably primarily what I'm going to use on the cover. Um, but I also have, with my more most recent design team package, I do have the, um, the wild rose die so I might actually make some flowers for the front of this I haven't quite decided yet um, and then I've also got this, the uh, chipboard clusters and then the layered stickers as well so I've got some more decorating to do um, I may go ahead and put these down on some of the uh, olive green artisan and cut matting around them with my scanning cut because it works so well for that, so I think I'm going to do that with some of those, um, and we'll go from there. But So that is your book. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell if you want to get notified when I post new videos. Um, you can follow along, of course, on my page on Facebook, Scrapping Under the Influence. I'm also under Scrapping Under the Influence on Instagram as well, and a lot of times I post other projects that I don't necessarily do videos for there, and then of course on my Facebook page, and then there's of course Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations, because if it was not for them, I probably would not do nearly as many projects as I do. <laughs> no, I probably would, but I wouldn't necessarily design as many as I do. So, um, as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.